<laughs> Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm really pleased to be here with all of you today. Um, first, let me thank uh, West Valley Unitarian for having me here, and especially Valerie Lynch for organizing all this and inviting me to come speak today. Thank you, Valerie. Today, um, I'm here to uh, share an experience I had several years ago toward attaining self-realization enlightenment um, through uh, many, many years of deep meditation practice, which I had written about it later on, all the details, how that whole thing entails, that experience, you know, what are the things that we go through? It's not an easy route. It's not an easy journey. So here is a book that I had written. It's called Home at Last. Every little bit detail about you want to know about enlightenment, realizing your divinity within, it's in there. How, what the process actually is. I may not be able to cover everything today, uh, given the time. And uh, you must get a copy of that and you'll get a lot more information. First, I want to let you know that. So um, today I like to uh, first clear some things about enlightenment. It's not a property of one, but for all of us. Number one, everybody should understand. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, or you know, what type of a work you do, nothing to do with that. No, with, with religion, what type of religion you are, had nothing to do with the race, gender, nothing. We all will transcend eventually when we are ready. That's for sure. Um, why? Because it's the ultimate process of human evolution. We must know who we are, why we are here, what's it all about, and tap back into that divine essence we all have within us. Now, if you don't do that, what's the purpose of coming back continuously over and over? That's what we have been doing, right? So the end stage is to experience that. Direct experience is what matters. You have to connect with the divine essence. And that's what it's all about. And I do these talks mainly because I believe that whoever goes through that process must share that information and that process, what it entails with everyone. That's why I do these talks. And I'm passionate about meditation as well. I've been meditating all my practically 20 years and I love meditation for, it, for what it does and where it takes us eventually. Another thing I want to make sure you guys understand, enlightenment is not something fun. <laughs> it's a messy, destructive process. I just want to make sure you all understand that. It's not something, oh, yeah, I'm going to be enlightened. It's a smooth ride here, and I'm going to be in cloud nine. Everything is fine and dandy. No, it is a messy, continuous problems with this physical and, uh, you know, what happens each stage, it's a step-by-step -step process, takes years sometimes. And depending on what kind of a constitution we have, how healthy you are, and how you keep up with your physical, everything makes a big, huge difference in how you transcend and go forward. Make sure you remember that. And also, um, it's nothing to do with, you know, being the more happy or better or anything like that. I mean, eventually, when you do connect with the universal consciousness, yes, the pros, much more better life. It's like practically a new birth, practically a new you, getting rid of the ego-driven life we lead right now. It is totally a different you. So that's what it's all about. A little bit about, and also before I start uh, telling you about a story, how I had gone through all that, just a few more things. Uh, enlightenment takes three parts. It goes through three stages all the time. It is, first is awakening. Second is self-realization. Third is the unification with the totality, what we call 
and liking it. You have to have all three done before you call yourself, yes, I've gone through that whole experience. No part can be eliminated. And each step of the way, each part is a messy business. Awakening, as you all know, is really that inner energy gets awakened and you have all these issues with the energy blooming, you know, coming up so much and the vibrations increases. Every single thing you can feel in your body. Believe me, that's why you have to be perfectly good health. So you can withstand all these uh, issues that come about. So that's why you have to eat well, exercise, sleep well, and take care of your physical first before you get into any kind of a spiritual practice for that matter, you know, let alone for self-realization. Otherwise, nothing will work. And awakening, like I was telling you, uh, that inner energy called, Easterners call it Kundalini energy that gets awakened. And that's the first step that must take place before you transcend. It's always almost like an opening door for, uh, for moving forward. You know, everything starts happening. All the uh, subtle energy centers get cleaned up and the, the energy starts moving to your uh, individualized soul or uh, energy or consciousness, whatever you call. By the way, I interchange all these words. Uh, soul, energy, consciousness, spirit means the same thing. It's that uh, part of that universal consciousness or divine that's within each one of us. And that needs that extra boost of energy. That's why the Kundalini gets awakened. And with that, you move toward the ultimate goal of uh, unification. So that must happen. And I'll tell you more about a little bit if I have time and details, but details are in there. What problems do you come about with the, that heat generating? Uh, normally we, we deal with just a little amount of normal consciousness to function each day, you know, to do our, to our work and eat, sleep, what have you. But when this gets awakened, you have 100% total heat and energy boosted. Yep. So everything internally gets all whacked up. Your digestive system gets messed up. Your, your nervous system gets all, oh, what is this heat? And if they don't function well, you get this agitation and uh, uh, continuous vibrations. You can feel it through your body. And that's a lot of things to get adjusted to eventually. And the only solution is continue to meditate, continue to practice your uh, whatever uh, you know, you're taking, spiritual practice you're undertaking, you have to do it. But, my, but meditation is the best, most direct, most fastest, and highest spiritual practice one can undertake. And I was driven toward doing meditation for some reason. Again, not everybody can go through meditation, but it's, it depends on your constitution, what you lead into and what you're interested in doing. Some people do meditation a lot of it, and some people are trying to meditate. As it is, meditation does wonders. You know that, right? In our day-to-day -day life. So it has a lot of benefits, meditation. When we are um, uh, meditating, it restores the balance within and realigns all our energy centers <coughs> and uh, chronic currents perfectly fine so that you can sit still and get into that quietude and stillness without any effort on your part. That's the best part about meditation because most of the things are done by the silence region, the, the stillness that creates by itself eventually. If you practice every day, same time, same place, and continue to do that, that's what it does. And that's why it's the best. And I loved it. I used to make a passion out of it. I'm so passionate that I, used, I never used to sleep without meditation, nor did I used to wake up without meditation. That's how much I love meditation. Now, um, about me getting into that experience, I'll tell you real quick because I can't cover everything. I was not a spiritual person to begin with when I was growing up. It is like all of a sudden, um, uh, way into my adult life, I'm married, I have two kids, I used to work in pharmaceutical company for a long time, and all of a sudden, um, I got into um, 
I don't know, Reiki for a while because I was interested in knowing what that does, the, heat, the healing technique, right? Getting that energy, with the con, uh, universal consciousness and channeling it out. That really made me get interested. And at that time I had some issues with my husband as well. I wanted to help him out too. You'll read all the details in my book. Um, so that interestingly took me to meditation for some reason. I used to get into meditative state very easily without any disturbances. And then I used to love it. And that's when, well, Reiki was one thing. Yes, I loved it. I learned it so I could help others or whatever or myself too. But meditation was what I was after after a while. So I started meditating so many years and all of a sudden what happened, to make the long story short, uh, there was this change in perception took place, a shift in my perception. Now, what do I mean by that? All of a sudden I was working and I was doing my work, you know, I was being the housewife, doing this, doing that, juggling everything, just like all of you. Um, it sort of dropped everything. It's like, uh, how do you say that? Disinterested in anything I wanted to do. I wasn't interested in working. I wasn't interested in anything the world has to offer. All the desires down the dumps, all the likes, dislikes, um, wants, you know, I want this, I want that. None of them were there. They're gone practically as if that I was is a, really a good thing because while I was meditating continuously, uh, I was driven deeper and deeper within and the meditations were getting better and better, which is amazing. And after that, slowly, uh, what happened was uh, I'm still with this down the dumps a little bit and I continuously move forward and continuously doing my meditations, thinking meditation will subside all the issues that I have come about. And that's when my Kundalini was awakened, which I mentioned to you earlier, that sh then the shift has taken, shift in perception from a normal perception of life to altered perception of life there's something going on something is driving me up a new path is driving me towards you know i was trying to get in there so i resigned my job i didn't want to do my job anymore because i gotta go find out what it is now this is what will happen to all of us when we are ready it will take you it will give you that enthusiasm. It will give you that drive to follow through. Now, if you don't follow through at that time with all these things divine is helping you, hey, that means it's not meant to happen to you. You're not going to transcend. So you have to go through that each step, your insights will telling you what to do, when to do, why, why you're doing that. And my eating habits have changed. My sleeping habits have changed. I had to take good care of myself to withstand all these tremors and heat, generating so much heat, I couldn't handle it. I was like, oh God, it's like there's a death, fight of death and you know living going on within me and I didn't know what's going on. So I would pray when I'm meditating, please take me to the destination faster. I cannot handle all these things, you know? You pray God, you pray that, that essence that's trying you to come toward him. So that's what happened. And it is continuously took me several years. Like I said, it's not something one, two, three, it happens. With dealing with all these issues and dealing with, uh, you know, wanting to find out, continued on. And soon my meditation got deeper and deeper and deeper. Finally, I was able to tap into that finest, fabric of consciousness. Now, what do I mean by that? It was that total uh, unifying field of nothingness, universal consciousness, I call it, oneness of existence. Now, that is like tremendously a different dimension. It's like, I call it uh, non-dual dimension, you can call it, or, or uh, oneness of existence. You can call it any name you want to give it. It's that field of incredible nothingness, expansion of consciousness, 
no beginning, no end. There's nothing you can add or you can subtract. It will be just sort of you're part of it. You realize, wow, this is who I am. This is what I am. This is the energy, consciousness, whatever you want to call it. You're part of it. I call it the primordial energy where everything springs from and eventually merges back into. That's where you, you must experience. You must feel it. You must know it. And there is this deep understanding you are finally home. You have connected to divine consciousness. Now, divine is not some figure, some idol, some nothing. It is totality. That universal <clears throat> consciousness is what is God we call. Now, we have to connect back to divine because otherwise you're lost in this life, death, life, death, continuous repeat of this existence. You need to know you're part of that so that you can become and say, aha, I'm finally, you get this sense of belonging so unique and strong that you are home finally, a sense of being at home. And that becomes your home. This we are in this outer world, what I call this dynamic aspect of creation, is one side. And that divine existence, the absolute is where you're supposed to be in. So you fluctuate between the two after that, actually. You know, it's like the same, uh, two sides of the same coin. This dynamic aspect, what we call life, we have to integrate that. Being in that state of mind, in that divine absence, you know you're part of that. And you spill that over when you're living your life. Nothing but better takes over. It is perfect way of living in that perfect equanimity. That's what we all need to do. And that's why all these teachers and gurus tell you, self-realize, know yourself, try to connect back to divine, reconnect that you have lost out with that consciousness that you're leading in the wrong way. You are with that ego consciousness. You have to get rid of that. And finally, when ego gets dissolving and there is another problem that comes about, uh, a lot of disorientation takes place while you are going through this later on, you know, because <coughs> ego is dissolving continuously because now your driving force is your true essential nature of self that's within you. You have connected with that and connected with the divine source. You have connected with that, uh, realize your divine within because it gives you indications. It blooms, it, it kind of like sunshines, bright sunshine and illumines all the time when you know you tapped into yourself. You know, that's the best indication. Now, how do you know that? Well, you're meditating deeper and deeper within. It takes you to that true nature of being, which is what you're supposed to be with. And let that direct your life, not the ego. So your ego becomes subservient, slowly dissolves. It doesn't disappear, but it's not running your show anymore. It is your, it's that new birth and new life, new perception. That's what you live with integrating all that in this outer world called life. You know, you have to adjust. But there's a lot of issues come about after that. Um, while you're in that dimension of ultimate dimension, I call it, um, you have no sense of your body. You have no sense of where you are. That's when you know you have connected with the universal consciousness. You're part of that. You lose your outer world. You lose your sense of body. You don't have, your hands are here, you, I'm this, I'm that. You can't feel anything. Your totality is totally, it's like a river joining an ocean. Everything is one. Everything is together. And you come back into this physical later on. It's not mean you are going to be gone now and die or go away. There's still pending things to do. You must come back to the physical, this body. And function the way you're supposed to, with a different driver, with a different being, who is your true nature of being. That's who you're going to 
deal with now from now on. You are not dealing with ego-minded. You're not dealing with ego driving you. With all these excitement continuously, this, that, you know, that's no longer there. You are with the true nature and you follow whatever route it's taking you. It's nothing but good from now on. I mean, it doesn't mean you're floating with happiness more than before or being, you know, extremely something. It's that perfect equanimity and perfect balance. No matter what happens, you're fine because yourself is driving you now. And you kind of lead that life thereafter and be okay. That's what happened to me in a nutshell. But more details, I didn't go in a lot of details because I know it takes forever uh, to get a copy of this book. I gave it to uh, Valerie, so she'll, she'll give it to you. And any other questions, I'd be happy to take care of you. And uh, after that, actually, the, when the ego starts dissolving and you have to interact with everybody and you have to come back to this world, it's going to be a little bit difficult too, which was what I had gone through several years. I didn't want to be here any longer. It's almost like uh, tasting nectar. And compared to that, everything seems terrible and remains terrible later, you know? You don't feel like, eh, why am I here in this world still? You know, what am I supposed to do? It's nothing excites you for a while. Because until you put everything on the level of mundane reality, it takes time. Interacting with your own family members sometimes, or interacting with your friends, kid, kin, you know? Because their way of thinking is different totally. And our way is different from a limited perception of reality to permanently altered perception of reality you're dealing with. You know, what you thought about, what you have imagined, all those untrue things that you've developed in your head, head, it's all gone, crumbled away. And now you know the truth, who you are, what you're about, and what you're supposed to be doing. It's not about you any longer. It's about what is it that we could do for somebody else? What is it that we can uh, uh, make a difference in, in this in this dynamic aspect called life. And that's why you're still here. And you can contribute a lot more than what you realize. And you can do a lot more for the world. And that's what it is. Thank you so much. And you too will go home. Keep meditating. You'll be home.